Hey my friend, today let's talk about a very real problem for musicians, the gear acquisition syndrome. I got it many years ago, but now I found a way to get rid of it. It's been five or six years that my pedal board has stayed almost the same. I've been playing with the same guitar for years and years. So in this video, I'm gonna show you seven steps that you can follow right now to get rid of your gear acquisition syndrome and finally focus more on your music. So first of all, let's define what is the GAS, the Gear Acquisition Syndrome, right? That's an acronym, G-A-S. First of all, three things. I think it's three elements that are pretty straightforward but very important. The first element is when you spend more time researching gear instead of playing music. Second, when you are never satisfied with any gear purchase, you always need more. And third, and I think it's the most important that you might have not thought about in the past, it's when the idea of owning gear makes you more excited than actually owning it. When the idea of owning gear is more exciting than getting the gear. I'm sure you can relate if you think that you have the gear acquisition syndrome. So for me, for example, I was a big fan of Sir guitars. I still have one, it's my favorite guitar. But I found out that the idea of getting the guitars was more exciting than actually getting the guitar. I think I went to a point where I bought five different Sir guitars, but I was playing with only one of them 95% of the time. And the other 5%, I would play with my other guitars just because I felt bad that I had such great guitars but never playing with them. So I was actually happier just thinking about getting those guitars, but once I got them, I barely played with them. So do you relate to that? I think that's the biggest problem with gear acquisition syndrome. But that being said, now I'm gonna show you the seven steps that you can apply right now to cure your gear acquisition syndrome. And those are more like tips, right? Uh, I call them steps because it's like the, the 12 steps, if you know what I mean, uh, because that's a real problem. That can be a real problem to have the gear acquisition syndrome. So you're ready? Step one, plan your purchases and stick to the list. The problem is not wanting a lot of gear. The problem is always wanting a lot of gear. There is absolutely nothing wrong if you desire to get many guitar pedals and lots of gear. The problem is if you are never satisfied. So in my case, I have a big pedal board with 10 pedals and lots of Strymon and they're really expensive and I have a Sir guitar that's also expensive. So that's not the problem. So just make a list of everything that you want and then save your money and then buy them and then stick to them. Stick to your list. Stop wanting more. Get your the pedals that you want and play with them. Make music with them. Really use them. So like I said, I like a lot Strymon pedals. They are expensive and I got the pedals that I wanted and they have been staying on my pedal board since many, many years. So that's the step one here, that's really important. Step two, change your pedals when you get real limitations. So that's kind of a rule that you have to set for yourself and follow no matter what. You have to change your pedals when you get real limitations for your playing. So a bad example of that would be, oh, I wonder if getting an analog delay would make my song sound better. I mean, my delays are digital and I kind of don't like this. So I, I think I'm gonna buy an analog delay. In that case, it's not a real limitation. Your digital delays, whether you have two or three digital delays, they have a time knob, they have a, a repeat knob, they have functions on them that make the delays usable. It's not by having an analog delay that's gonna change anything to what you're gonna play or the songs you're gonna make. But for example, 
examples of real limitations. If you say, I have to change the tempo really often live with my delays on stage and I don't have a tap tempo and I, I have to bend and just twist the time knob and I can never get it right and it's really getting on my nerves. So that's a real limitation. You need to set up your tempos so that they are precise and you cannot because you don't have a tap tempo. So you could plan your purchase of a delay pedal with a tap tempo. Or example, I want to cover ambient guitar songs, but I have just a single channel looper and I would need two or three loop channels so I can never get to uh, actually cover those songs. So that's a real limitation. You can plan buying a looper pedal with more channels on it so you, that you can actually make the, the, the covers that you want to make. So you see what I'm saying here? A real limitation can also be if your pedal is broken, if it doesn't work anymore or there's a problem with it, yes, you can change your pedal. But don't create reasons for yourself that, that are not valid to justify needing more pedals. You know that it's not true, right? So that was step two. Step three, unsubscribe from pedal demo channels and replace them with music channels. So you know that watching those pedal demo channels are just feeding your desires to have more guitar pedals. So replace them with channels that talk more about music. For example, you could subscribe or watch more if you're already subscribed to a guy like Rick Beato, which is really popular. He's going to talk about music theory and the history of music and he's going to analyze songs and it's always really great to have musical perspectives and not always thinking about gear, right? So lots of the next steps is going to um, limit the temptation by limiting access to stuff that makes you think about gear, right? So step four is delete your account on gear forums. You do not need to have the opinion of other people's to know what you should buy or what gear you should get. Those people have all sorts of opinions and those opinions are always changing and they like to debate this pedal versus this pedal, this microphone versus this microphone. And I know that when you browse through those forums, you just get more confused the more you go on them because there are so many opinions and you don't know to get them. So delete your account on those gear forums. Step five, delete apps and shortcuts to websites like Craigslist or Reverb.com or eBay or anywhere that you go to browse the used market to see what you could buy or trade or sell you are wasting your time. And that was one of my biggest problems when I had the gear acquisition syndrome is that I would click on my shortcuts to those websites multiple times a day just to see what was new on the used market. And when I would see something that I thought I wanted, I would create uh, a need for those pedals or guitars that I saw even if I didn't need them. So for example, that's where my Sur guitar cravings came from. When I saw that a Sur guitar was listed, used for a good price, I would create a need for that guitar and I wanted it and the pictures were beautiful and I pictured myself having that guitar and, and I would end up buying it even if I don't need it. But if I didn't click on that website in the first place, I would not even know that that guitar was available. So I would even think about getting one. So delete all your apps, all your access, make it hard to go on those websites because that's not helping you. Step six, limit to maximum five YouTube demos and a maximum of 30 minutes of watching demos to make a pedal purchase decision. Like I said, you do not need other people's opinions to get your pedals. So what I would do when you um, followed your rule of wanting to buy a pedal because you have real limitations with what you have 
and that you know that it's true, then I would recommend uh, just going on Google and uh, searching for the owner's manual of the pedal that you want to make sure that it has all the functions that you want. And then go watch two, three, four musical demos on YouTube. Try to just get demos of people playing the pedal so that you can hear how it sounds and not get demos where people give their opinion on pedals and limit your time on that. That's why I don't like to follow channels like That Pedal Show. Those guys can make one hour videos talking about pedals. That's too long. You don't need, first of all, their opinions to know what's good for you. And you don't need to spend as much time. I mean, they have Q&A videos of two, three hours. That's absolutely crazy, you know? So you don't need that. That's why on my channel, I make musical demos. I just demonstrate what the pedal can do musically. I try to be musical and have something great sounding with the pedal, but I don't talk about the functions. I don't give you my opinion because I know you don't need that. You just need to know how the pedal sounds and that's it. And the last step is the most important of all the five, uh, the seven steps, sorry. So if you are multitasking or something, just come back to me right now. Step seven, create musical goals with clear deadlines. Create musical goals because your goal is to shift your attention from gear to music. So by having clear goals for your music with deadlines, you make sure to stay accountable for your goals. So for example, you could say, I'm going to make my own solo EP in six months from now and you put the date on your calendar and you tell all your friends and you write it on social media just to make sure that you're accountable for it and then you you know that you have to work towards that goal you have to write those songs you have to work on your EP so that makes more time dedicated to music than gear so it's a really really good thing for you but if you want don't want to have big goals like this that can be learning goals. You can say, I'm going to take uh, more guitar lessons or uh, I'm going to learn something new or I'm going to practice my guitar more. So for example, if you're looking to for things to learn on my channel, I offer a free mini course on guitar chords for ambient guitar. So you could take, for, and that's the first link in the description box if you want it, that's just a gift for you, that's free. You can take my free mini course, you can learn about spread triads and how to create your own chord progressions with them. And you can download my free chord charts and exercises and start working on that just so that you have a musical goal that you can work on that distracts you from all the, the gear that you are always thinking about, right? So once again, if you want my free course, uh, I offer it to all of my new viewers. So it's my pleasure. First link in the description box below. So there you go. These are the five, the seven steps. I don't know why I said five steps all the time, but these are the seven steps. Plan your purchases and stick to your list. Step two, change your pedals when you get real limitations. Step three, unsubscribe from pedal demo channels. Step four, delete your account on gear forums. Step five, delete apps and shortcuts to websites like Craigslist, Reverb, and eBay. Step six, limit uh, watching five demos for 30 minutes a maximum time when you want to buy a new pedal and get informed. And step seven, create musical goals with clear deadlines. So I hope that it's going to help you get rid and cure your gear acquisition syndrome. You can do it. I did it. I'm the proof that it can be done. And I hope that you will be more fulfilled if you work more on your musical goals, if you become a better musician, if you create music you are proud of, because at the end of the day, that that's what matters, right? Music, not gear. So once, just before you leave, once again, you can check out my free mini courses. First link in the description box. If you're looking for new goals, new things to learn. That's my pleasure to offer them to you. And uh, we will talk very soon. Until next time, au revoir.